Hi folks, in this lesson we're going to move on from the schematics that we've been looking at so far in the course and start to look at some of the layout components that Angular Material provides. Starting out with the expansion panel component. Unlike the components that we looked at earlier, we can't use the CLI to create an expansion panel. There's no schematic for this one. But that's fine, it's just a small component and we can create it manually ourselves pretty easily. Let's see how, but first, we just need to add some basic routing to the example application. We can't use the dashboard for every single example, so let's wire up the nav menu so that we can switch between different examples easily. First of all then, let's create a new file in the root of the app folder called app.roots.ts. Inside this file, we just need to define the roots that the application will use. First of all, let's import the roots typed declaration from the Angular router, and we'll also want to import the dashboard. Now we can define an array of roots for the application. Inside this array then, we want to add an object for each root in the app. To start with, there will only be one, which is the dashboard. We just map the path dashboard to the dashboard component. We should also add an empty root, which also maps to the dashboard, which will make the dashboard the default component. So this will redirect empty routes to the dashboard component again. We should also add a wildcard route to handle unmatched routes. We'd normally show some kind of page not found component, but to save time, let's just redirect to the dashboard component once again. Great, so now we've got our routes. We need to bring these into the app module along with Angular's router. Now we need to add the router module to the imports array and invoke its for root method, passing in the app routes that we just defined. So that should be the routing fully set up and configured. We can go ahead and add a router outlet now to render the routed component in. We can add this in the template for the nav component. And we can replace the existing app hyphen dashboard custom element with this router outlet. And while we're here in the template, let's update one of the links in the nav list to point to the dashboard. So this should get us where we want to be in terms of routing for the application. Let's just take a look in the browser and make sure everything's still working. So we can see that we're now on the slash dashboard route in the browser's address bar. So let's now create a new component called expander. We can use the CLI for this. And once this command is finished, we should now have a new component ready to be used. Before we can use the material expansion panel, we need to bring the mat expansion module from material into our application. So let's import this in the app module alongside the other existing material modules that we've used so far. And let's just add a new route now for this new component to the app roots file. This will need to go before the empty and wildcard roots. And 
Now let's add a link to the nav component once again. And in the browser now, we should be able to go to the new expander route. And as you can see, we get the default expander works markup, and that comes from the expander component template. We can build a basic expansion panel using only expansion panel directive elements, and the basic structure is quite straightforward. So let's start out with a matte card as the container, purely for styling and layout purposes. Then we can use an outer matte-expansion-panel custom element. Inside this, we can provide a header for the expansion panel. And then inside this, we can add a title for the panel. Any content we add after the expansion panel header will be contained within the body of the expansion panel and will be hidden while the panel is closed. So let's add some basic content. So this is about the minimum that we need for a working expansion panel. We should now be able to see this in the browser and interact with it. The expansion panel does support some additional custom elements. We can add a description to the panel header. And we can see that that gets displayed in the middle of the panel header. And there's one more custom element that we can use as well. And that's for if we want to add some actions as a kind of footer to the expansion panel. And let's open up the expansion panel. And we can see that we get this nice kind of styled footer area and the button sits within that. And it doesn't have any of the styling issues that we saw with the footer of the card components earlier on in the course. So this should just work out of the box. Obviously the button doesn't actually do anything, but it at least is displayed as we would expect. So the expansion panel has a number of input properties and output events. By default, an expansion panel is closed when the page loads, but if we want the panel to be open, we can use the expanded property on the expansion panel. We don't need to use square brackets around the property because we're just hard coding it to the string true, but we could also link that to a property of the expander component class if we wanted to. So now let's go back to the browser. And we can see that the panel is now open by default when the page loads. By default, the title of the expansion panel has a clickable toggle icon at the right, which indicates whether the content panel is open or closed. We can remove that if we wish using the hide toggle property. So now the icon has gone. We can still click on the header and it still opens and closes as before, we just don't get the icon now. If we want to disable the expansion panel completely, we can use the disabled property. So now the header is greyed out, the content isn't, and the, the button is still clickable, but we can't now click on the header to open or close. Disabling the panel also has the effect of removing the toggle icon. So let's remove the disabled property now. And let's focus on some of the output events. So the outputs allow us to respond to the panel being opened, closed or destroyed. 
So, for example, if we wanted to know when the panel had been expanded, we could listen for the opened event. We just need to add a binding to the mat expansion panel container. And now we just need to add a corresponding method to the component class. And let's just log to the console. So because our panel is open by default, we should see the console log straight away. The panel was opened. And we see the same log message each time we open it. The mat expansion panel header element also has some configurable properties for setting the collapsed and expanded height of the panel so that we can force it to a specific size if we wish. But aside from this, none of the other elements have configurable properties or events. We can add as many expansion panels as we want, but they will all be individual and completely separate from each other. If we want the expansion panel to behave more as a traditional accordion, then we can wrap one or more expansion panels in a mat hyphen accordion. Let's add a new section to the component for this accordion. The elements that we can add are very similar to when we're adding a single expansion panel, but we need to use the mat hyphen accordion outer container for all of them. And let's just add some expansion panels in there. And let's take a look in the browser again. And now we can see that the panels are nested snugly up against each other and none of them are open by default. When we open one of them up, we get this spacing in between them. Aside from that, it functions very similarly to a single expansion panel, but with the accordion, we can only have one panel open at a time by default. All of the expansion panel properties that we looked at at the start of this lesson can still be configured, but the accordion also has a few extra ones. For example, if we want to disable this spacing that gets added between the expanded panel and other panels in the accordion, we can set the display mode property. And to remove the spacing, we need to set the mode to flat. And now the panels stay kind of nestled up against each other. So in this lesson, we saw how to easily add either an individual expansion panel or an accordion to a component. We saw the different custom directive elements that we can use to build up these components. And we looked at some of the different configurable properties that we can use. Thanks for watching.